The UK has outlined a plan to get advanced fixed-wing drones, and possibly crude tailhook-equipped planes, operating from its carriers. The UK Royal Navy has revealed details of its intention to fit its two aircraft carriers with assisted launch systems and recovery gear, enabling operations by a variety of fixed-wing uncrewed aircraft and, potentially, also conventional takeoff and landing crewed types. Currently, the Royal Navy's Queen Elizabeth class carriers are able to operate short takeoff and vertical landing F 35B stealth jets, as well as helicopters. There have been previous indications that the service wants to at least explore adding different drones to its future carrier air wing. The Royal Navy has now also decided that it will kick off this project with tests of the General Atomics Mojave short takeoff and landing drone on one of its two carriers later this year. Under the Future Maritime Aviation Force initiative, the Royal Navy is planning to retrofit arrestor gear and assisted launch equipment on its carriers. As currently equipped, the Queen Elizabeth-class warships have ski-jump takeoff ramps for the short takeoff and vertical landing F-35Bs. An earlier idea of installing catapults and arrestor gear during the two carriers' construction and procuring F-35C variants to equip them was turned down on cost grounds after which the two short takeoff and vertical landing configured carriers were finished and put into service. Under a $1.9 million contract, General Atomics will use its Mojave to demonstrate a threshold capability for a short takeoff and landing uncrewed air vehicle aboard the HMS Prince of Wales aircraft carrier. Once the STOL concept is proven out with the Mojave, the Royal Navy intends to add some kind of recovery system to the Queen Elizabeth design allowing operations by larger fixed-wing drones. Uncrewed aircraft in this category are an aspiration that the Royal Navy is already working toward under Project Vixen. Ultimately, the Queen Elizabeth-class design would be reworked with catapult launch gear, allowing the warships to operate the heaviest aircraft you can imagine. That would include larger, high-performance drones, but potentially also crewed fixed-wing aircraft, which would be a very significant development for the Queen Elizabeth-class. As it stands, the carriers are unable to operate fixed-wing airborne early warning aircraft or airborne tankers, putting limits on their offensive operations. In the future, these functions could potentially be taken on by catapult-launched fixed-wing aircraft, whether crewed or uncrewed. The Royal Navy is already exploring different catapult launch systems, with options including the US-developed electromagnetic aircraft launch system, the introduction of which has been far from trouble-free as well as the UK-developed electromagnetic kinetic induction technology demonstrator, finding room for complex launch and recovery systems, as well as fielding the manpower to maintain and operate them will be a challenge no matter how much extra space the vessels have to accommodate them. Back in 2021, the UK Ministry of Defence put out a request for information or RFI for aircraft launch and recovery equipment. This RFI called for information on assisted launch and arrested recovery options for a range of air vehicles, which would be suitable to fit a vessel within three to five years, as part of the future maritime aviation force. The Royal Navy will also need to develop control stations, data links, unique procedures, and much more to ensure the drones can be safely and effectively integrated within the carrier air group, for example, the lack of an angled landing area. Used to enable simultaneous launch and recovery operations is another issue. Although the Queen Elizabeth class has a lot of width to its deck space that may be able to be adapted to accommodate this, at least to some degree. The existing takeoff ramps, tailored for the short takeoff and vertical landing F-35B, may also need some kind of reworking to make them suitable to catapult launch drones or even manned aircraft. It is very clear now that the United Kingdom is very seriously looking at ways to radically overhaul the kinds of aircraft that its carriers can operate, starting with drones. It's also worth noting that the Royal Navy has already begun more modest trials involving smaller, jet-powered drones launched from one of its carriers in 2021. These initial tests involved the kinetic Banshee Jet 80, best known as a target drone. The drone demonstrated the potential for flying future adversary missions from the carriers, as well as pointing the way to embarking more capable operational uncrewed vehicles. The Banshee can be launched using a portable catapult from the deck of an aircraft carrier, or potentially any other large vessel, and is recovered via parachute after completing its mission. 
Though the parachute recovery method could allow for the drones to come down in water on these trials, however, they touched down on dry land. At the time, the Royal Navy said the Banshee could be suitable for testing future sensors, weaponry, and radio equipment, in addition to flying as an adversary asset, simulating a fast jet or anti-ship missile. The Royal Navy's wider evaluation of smaller carrier-based drones is known as Project Vampire, which specifies the use study of lightweight, fixed-wing carrier-borne crewless autonomous systems, for which the Banshee provides a useful surrogate. As to what types of drones we might see aboard UK carriers in the next phases of the future maritime aviation force effort. Project Vixen, at the larger end of the UAV spectrum, is assessing a wide array of operational and support missions, including aerial refueling a role being developed by the US Navy's MQ-25 Stingray as well as Strike, potentially in a loyal wingman type role, networked together with F-35Bs. Other missions could include surveillance and electronic warfare. As well as the MQ-25, the Boeing MQ-28 Ghostbat, a loyal wingman-type drone designed by the company's Australian subsidiary, seems to have also garnered official interest in the United Kingdom. Here it should also be considered that the United Kingdom is not the only nation currently looking to add fixed-wing drone capabilities to its carrier force. With Turkey having taken a notable lead in this area, at least in terms of its aspirations. The TCG Anadolu, the Turkish Navy's largest warship, is planned to serve not only as an amphibious assault ship, but also as a platform for different tiers of armed drones. As far as these British carrier-based drone ambitions are concerned, it's clear that bringing such capabilities to any kind of aircraft carrier is a significant challenge. Even more so, when that carrier requires considerable modifications to make that happen. But it's now abundantly clear that the UK Royal Navy wants to move in this direction and it will be highly interesting to see the results.